So um, hello, and uh, um, actually the uh, motivation to give this talk was uh, um, basically uh, Vala, uh, he proposed that uh, we could talk about the uh, Icing superconductivity because based on uh, the recent review paper uh, Joe and I uh, wrote. And uh, um, so then I thought maybe it's better to choose one specific material which we study because we uh, know this material better. Uh, so we, uh, in this talk, I want to um, introduce um, icing superconductivity and then um, just move on to talk about uh, the details of uh, superconductivity in the field they are standing. Um, and then in this particular system, we find that uh, it can also host uh, icing superconductivity, although um, it's different from the previous case because uh, uh, this system, we do not need to break the inversion symmetry. So finally, I will just summarize. So I want to start with uh, this summary plot uh, in recent years because of these uh, nice uh, new techniques uh, we can um, realize highly crystalline, single crystalline uh, superconductors even down to a monolayer. And uh, with these uh, techniques, um, of course, you can uh, have a high sample quality and also um, you have a lot of uh, tuning knobs like uh, different substrates or uh, you can ch change the carrier density uh, in situ and study how the superconductivity uh, emerges and evolves. So all of these need to new physics. And uh, one of the uh, interesting physics in these systems are, is the uh, recently called the icing superconductor. So let me start by um, um, briefly introduce uh, the uh, concept. So uh, here we consider just uh, uh, Cooper pairs with singlet pairing. And uh, if we do not consider the uh, vortex effect, basically in the 2D uh, ultra thin superconductors, and if we apply the magnetic field in the plane, then this effect can be uh, usually neglected. So in this case, the magnetic field uh, cannot gen uh, generate any vortices. So the uh, main effect is to polarize all the uh, spins. So once all these spins get polarized, then uh, you break the Cooper pairs and then uh, you kill superconductivity. So this can be nicely seen uh, in this system uh, where some people uh, quite some time ago, they studied the ultra thin uh, aluminum superconductor. And here you can see that here, I plot the um, upper critical field in the plane um, parallel to the aluminum uh, thin film uh, normalized by the uh, so-called poly uh, ratio, which is a, a magnetic field on, where the spins should be polarized considering the uh, standard BCS ratio and G factor two. So uh, in this case, by um, lowering the temperature, see the upper critic goes up, but it never exceeds uh, the poly limit. So it follows quite nicely this uh, um, poly um, paramagnetic, paramagnetic uh, effect. And uh, people also found that uh, in the low temperature regime, the transition uh, seems to be a first order transition instead of a second order. And uh, this is different. Uh, in recent case, uh, years, people found, uh, for example, these superconductors where, uh, for example, he, we have uh, four nanometer delta doped STO or uh, sub layer LED. These systems uh, clearly they have stronger, much stronger spin orbit coupling effects. And uh, as you can see here, the poly limit uh, is uh, greatly exceeded. So um, for these systems, people uh, already attribute the uh, effects to uh, something related to spin orbit coupling. But uh, in um, end of 2015 and the beginning of 2016, um, people find uh, uh, or identify the uh, more clear uh, mechanism, which is uh, uh, called the icing superconductivity. It was found in, uh, for example, molybdenum disulfide and uh, niobium disulfide uh, that the upper critic field in the plane can also exceed the poly limit by a large factor. And uh, people attribute this to the uh, two effects. So uh, for the single layer case, um, for these 2H uh, systems, you do not have inversion symmetry. So this crystal net is uh, naturally breaks the inversion symmetry. And due to this inversion symmetry breaking, plus the strong spin orbit coupling effect, we have the uh, spin splitting at K and K prime points and these two pockets. So I'm just showing you one pair uh, of these um, um, pockets. And uh, these pockets, they split up, but with opposite uh, directions. And once the system turns into a superconductor, then the red pocket can pair up with their blue pocket. And these uh, spins, they, polarize, they are polarized and locked 
uh, to the outer plane direction. So this is why when we apply an in-plane magnetic field, it becomes so difficult to um, polarize the spins and to um, break the Cooper pairs. So we have the uh, so-called icing uh, si systems. And um, following this idea, people uh, tried in other systems, for example, in uh, tantalum disulfide and WS2. And uh, you can see that clearly with the uh, heavier uh, elements, the strong, stronger spin or coupling effects, the um, apocritic field also gets enhanced um, and it goes up further. So it also um, supports the idea that the spin or coupling is playing a strong role in all of these uh, systems. So um, we summarize here that um, these, these are the recent uh, developments um, people found um, enhanced apocritic field in these systems and then later on in uh, these um, blue um, circles uh, where uh, they uh, identify the so-called icing superconductivity. So uh, let me go back to this plot and update in uh, some of the recent results like um, WTE2 and also uh, twisted bilirgraphene, the most famous case. And in, uh, in my talk, I want to uh, focus on uh, TIN. Uh, so this is a system we studied and this is different from uh, the previous case of um, TIN because here we are studying uh, alpha phase. So before going to the details, I want to uh, highlight that uh, these systems are all grown by uh, MBE. So uh, they are macroscopically uh, large films. And uh, we can not only play with uh, high, uh, the, the uh, crystallinity and uh, gives us also two dimensionality, but also um, the, uh, we can have a band structure at play. So this is uh, quite uh, um, different from the, uh, uh, the cases in the past. So uh, what is the standing or um, here it's actually a single layer of tin. Um, so it's from the alpha phase of tin, <coughs> sorry, cut from the one one direction. So in the mono layer case, it has the uh, hexagonal lattice similar to um, graphene, but uh, from the in-plane uh, um, direction, you can see it has a buckling. So um, people predicted that for this system, it can host um, even quantum spin hole effect and room temperature. So this was uh, the uh, motivation for people to study uh, this system, at least uh, in recent years. So let me briefly uh, introduce the uh, idea of topological uh, properties. So we start with uh, the atomic shell and uh, we have five phase and five P orbitals. And around gamma point, we consider mostly PX and PY orbital. And once we um, put the atoms into a lattice, then we have the natural um, symmetric band and anti-symmetric band is uh, uh, splitting. But for uh, standing, um, the lattice constant can be uh, very large so that the S orbital, uh, this um, anti-symmetric S orbital lies below the PX uh, Y um, symmetric band. So uh, usually uh, this band, P band um, is related to the balance band, so it goes down. And uh, for the S orbital, it, uh, it's related to the conduction band, which goes up. So in the momentum space, you can imagine that uh, there is a crossing point. Uh, so once we turn on the spin up, or be coupling, we can actually open up a band gap. So then this system becomes uh, uh, topologically non-trivial and the uh, topological physics uh, happens uh, uh, around these bands. So um, for standing, uh, actually uh, we can see that it, um, in all these carbon four um, group, all these elements, uh, the single layer case has been uh, realized. And uh, when you move down the periodic table, uh, the physics move from uh, K and K prime points to gamma point. And also because of the stronger spin orbit coupling, we open up, a, uh, we can uh, open up a band gap and uh, um, the topological physics can uh, um, become important. And down to a monolayer layer of lead, it, uh, it's a superconductor has been uh, observed before. So people realized uh, standing because um, uh, standing has dangling bounds actually. So we cannot do exfoliation. So they, um, we use, um, people try to grow this by MBE. So the first group that choose this steroid uh, topological insulator and just grow a single layer of tin on top. And afterwards, lots of other groups also um, try different substrates. Um, the main reason uh, is that uh, the uh, standing and the lattice constant has to be large enough in order to enter the uh, topological uh, regime. And uh, so in recent years, uh, for example, on copper, 
because of the large lattice constant, uh, the system, uh, they, they use STM and find also uh, the edge conduction. Uh, so it indicates that this system may be a topologically non-trivial system. Uh, still, in our case, we would like to do some transport and uh, we would like to have uh, insulating or semiconducting substrate. So this is why um, um, quite some time ago, uh, Yun Yizhang, he started to grow this by putting another layer of um, semiconductor on top of bismuth telluride. So we actually grow um, bismuth telluride first and then uh, lead telluride. And then on top of that, we grow uh, staining. Unfortunately for a monolayer of staining grown this way, uh, it's still not in the topological uh, regime. So the system is, uh, has a band gap, but it's uh, just the trivial band gap. But uh, uh, as long as we grow another layer, uh, a bilayer standing, we call it, we start to see some bands crossing the Fermi level. So uh, then naturally uh, we are interested in the transport properties of these bands. So this is why we just um, simply take out the sample and measure. And uh, it's kind of a surprising uh, seeing that uh, we see superconductivity uh, immediately from bilayer and then for trilayer, four uh, quintuple layer. Uh, and the uh, thickest one we reach is uh, 20 layers. But there is a kind of um, a transition here because of the growth mode changes. So we focus mostly on these ultra thin films because we uh, are confident that these films are uh, flat and uh, this uh, is layer by layer grow, grow uh, mode. So there are two surprises. First thing, uh, is that uh, for all of these previous cases grown by MBE, we need the uh, protection layers. Otherwise, uh, if we just take out a sample from the growth, uh, the UHV chamber, the system can be damaged or uh, superconductivity can um, be killed because uh, uh, these systems can easily get uh, um, oxidized or um, damaged by maybe uh, uh, water. But uh, this is not the case for uh, this uh, system uh, standing. So we, um, didn't put any protection layers. We just grow, for example, two layers of tin and then just uh, took out the sample from the UHV, UHV chamber and we could see superconductivity. And uh, even more, uh, because uh, in the um, beginning, we didn't pay that much attention. Actually, we just put these samples uh, on the shelf and for a few weeks, and then later we just remeasure and we could still see superconductivity. So uh, it seems like this superconductivity is pretty robust. Another surprising thing is that uh, we are measuring alpha tin, but uh, the bulk case alpha tin is just a semi-metal and uh, beta tin is the uh, superconductor we usually talk about. So in order to figure out uh, first uh, why this happens, uh, why uh, alpha tin turns into a superconductor, we study the thickness dependence of uh, um, uh, the superconductivity. Uh, here I'm just fixing, uh, we fix on the uh, layers of tin to three layers, but changing but we change the thickness of the substrate. So by doing so, uh, we see that the superconductivity occurs uh, from five to six layers and then around eight to 10 layers of uh, the substrate, let telluride, then the superconductivity, uh, the transition temperature uh, increases further to about one Kelvin. And here you can see that we even tried uh, second measurements after a few months or we, we uh, intentionally grow a second batch of samples after one year and we can nicely reproduce these uh, results. And uh, um, so we believe this reason why um, stannin turns into a superconductor now, the alpha tin turns into a superconductor, is mainly because of the substrate. We grow a substrate thicker enough that uh, the substrate can uh, transfer charge to uh, stannin. So basically, we move the uh, Fermi label. Um, and then it's not really in uh, just exactly in the semi metal. Uh, point. And uh, furthermore, from some detailed transport, we see that uh, uh, the sample with higher TC is a two band uh, superconductor, um, both from the, uh, up, uh, the perpendicular upper critical field. It uh, shows this uh, um, upward bending. And also from the critical current, uh, we see this uh, kink here, which is also, uh, which was also seen in, uh, for example, albium. So uh, the nice thing for, about the uh, standing is that um, because we are basically uh, measuring the same thing in the UHV and outside. So uh, here we can um, map out the band structure evolution also. Uh, so in the previous slide, I talked about the transport uh, uh, results as a function of the um, increase in thickness of red terabyte. Now I'm uh, doing the same thing, but uh, just uh, studying the band structure evolution. So uh, as you can see here, this um, black valence band goes down. Um, so, it, and also we can extract 
uh, extract the K KF, the Fermi momentum, and also um, goes down. So it means that Fermi level is really uh, going up. And also, uh, one can see that the, in the center, this part, it looks like a rounded tip, but then it gradually evolves to be like an hourglass uh, shape. So we believe that uh, in the Khatoum um, picture, uh, this is what uh, we believe is happening, that in the beginning, the Fermi level is cut in here, and we have the whole band outside, but uh, then the Fermi level moves up, and then we have uh, electron pocket in the middle, and then uh, also the whole pocket, uh, the whole, whole band outside. And then the system becomes more clearly like a two band superconductor. And this transition uh, really happens uh, from about six layers to 10 layers, which also correlates uh, very nicely with our uh, transport uh, experiments. So there are two things that um, Laterite can do. One is that we can transfer charges. Another thing I didn't mention too much is that um, it also can release the strain. Um, because uh, basically from the Bismarck telluride substrate, we, the, uh, the uh, original motivation was to release the strain um, from the substrate. And uh, also we did, uh, or my, uh, our theoretical collaborators also did the theoretical uh, first principle calculations, and we can see that there is a, a qualitative in, uh, agreement between theory and experiment uh, in, uh, from uh, trial year standing. So here you can see that uh, in, uh, in the calculation, we put uh, hydrogen as the uh, absorbance to saturate the dangling bounds. We have some uh, evidence from uh, APLIS that uh, this is uh, indeed the case because uh, uh, after a while, uh, we store a sample after a while and we see that bands around K point they open up a larger gap. And we believe this is because just uh, the residual gas in the UHV, they can saturate the dangling bounds already uh, inside the UHV. And with this, um, uh, this hydrogen absorbance uh, in consideration, and then uh, we can calculate, uh, or our theoretical cal uh, collaborator calculates that um, uh, we have also this M shaped band. Uh, when also here, you can see that there is a band inversion. So uh, that that is to say that for trilayer standing, it, although for monolayer it's not in the topological case, but for trilayer it can be in the topologically uh, non trivial. Uh, regime. Although here in our uh, system, the Fermi level is not cutting uh, here, but cutting down there. So that's why we have uh, uh, still a uh, superconductor. And uh, in, uh, for more details, we study, for example, here a trial is standing um, on this uh, laterized six layer of laterized substrate. And uh, just to show that it's, it's indeed a 2D superconductor, for example, the upper critic field uh, in the plane goes um, um, like a square root dependence on temperature and also the apocalyptic auto plane uh, follows a, a straight line. And also uh, around TC, it, fo um, it follows a 2D ginsburg nandau formula. However, we noticed that, um, like I said in the beginning, uh, there is this Pauli limit, which is about 1.8 times uh, the TC. So in our case, it's about one Tesla. And clearly the apocalyptic field exceeds the Pauli limit a lot. But uh, in standing, we can easily find that uh, the system has the uh, inversion symmetry, or we can find inversion center for uh, this trilayer, trilayer uh, standing. So we are different. This system is clearly different from uh, TMD materials. Uh, so uh, in order to understand this, we think maybe it's better first to see what's happening here, because uh, there is a large empty area. And uh, uh, how to fill up this gap is just to um, cool down the sample further. So uh, then we just collaborate with uh, uh, Joseph Fawson and uh, uh, Jürgen Smet. So Joe was uh, back in Max Planck and now in uh, Caltech. So um, we can cool down the sample further and see that um, interestingly, the apocalyptic field are not even uh, saturates, it, it actually shows upturn behavior. So this is a different sample with a higher TC. Like I said, uh, we can change the uh, thickness of the substrate and to enhance the TC. So this system also around TC, it follows a 2D Ginsburg Landau, but then it uh, uh, doesn't follow this behavior at lower temperature. So this upturn is uh, quite interesting and uh, clearly, clearly it can rule out some other uh, mechanism. For example, the um, people consider the spin orbit scattering with impurities and that can randomize the spins. And uh, once the spins are randomized, um, uh, you can enhance the uh, apocalyptic field because these spins are not polarized in the single direction. Um, clearly, it cannot um, uh, fully agree with our experimental data. 
And then we uh, thought about FFLO because in FFLO, it also um, predicts uh, this uh, upturn behavior, but that requires the system to be in the uh, clean limit. Uh, so the coherence length ha has to be smaller than the mean free pass. But in our system, it is uh, clearly not uh, that clean. So we are still uh, dirty in the dirty limit. So then we uh, check that for ice superconductor, it was also predicted that uh, if one would manage to cool down the sample down to this very low temperature regime, uh, one would also see this upturn behavior. However, it was not uh, really uh, seen in these TMD materials, as you can see here, but this is pretty challenging. Uh, so here, these solid lines are used still the uh, KLB uh, formula to feed the data. So um, this part is uh, quite challenging because uh, um, the magnetic field uh, you need to use is uh, exceeding the uh, available magnetic uh, magnet. However, for bilayer case, uh, people indeed see, see that uh, the uh, upper critic field shows a sort of saturating saturation behavior, and it was uh, uh, attributed to either the intervalley scattering uh, or maybe some disorder effect. So, like if you add disorder, you can also smear up this uh, upturn behavior. And for uh, another system, uh, six layers of lead, uh, they found some indication that the uh, the upper critic field does not saturate when you cool down but uh, this upturn is also uh, missing. Again, uh, in icing superconductor, you need to break the inversion symmetry, and also you need to have bands around K and K prime points. So both of these uh, are not satisfied in uh, standing because we can find uh, inversion center. Although here, uh, one would argue that we, we have uh, uh, the uh, mirror symmetry breaking because uh, you have a substrate. Uh, however, this induces another effect, the rush bar effect, which is uh, different from the uh, established case for uh, icing superconductor. So uh, also our bands are around gamma point instead of and, uh, K and K prime points. So even if we have some uh, inversion symmetry breaking, we may not enjoy that um, uh, symmetry breaking effect uh, and um, gamma point. So then our um, um, collaborators, uh, they just pointed out, uh, our theoretical collaborators, they pointed out that even at, in our system, uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, the topological physics happens for these px plus iy, px minus iy orbits. And uh, once we turn on the spin orbit coupling, we actually have also uh, effective Zeeman splitting. As you can see here for the same orbital index, we have spin up and spin down. So um, in the previous case for, um, uh, TMD materials here, we have the, uh, without spin orbit coupling, we have twofold degeneracy. So spin up, spin down, they are degenerate. And uh, once you lift up this uh, degeneracy, you have a single pocket um, with the lowest energy. This is not different here that we have two pockets. Uh, so there are still a pair of bands and Fermi level. So these bands with spins uh, locked outer plane, they can form Cooper pairs and uh, these form Cooper pairs, and they also have similar physics like icing superconductor in TMD materials. So with this idea, um, um, Kevin New, our uh, theoretical collaborator, he further developed uh, the formula and uh, we can really uh, nicely um, explain our experimental results. So to distinguish our uh, um, phenomenon from the previous case, we call this type two uh, icing superconductivity because here we do not need to break the inversion symmetry. So with this understanding, we can further uh, understand some details uh, in our uh, experiment. On the left side, I show that we can change the Fermi, um, Fermi level by changing the thickness of uh, lead telluride. So uh, for six layers of lead telluride, the Fermi level is uh, a little bit low, and then the KF is large. So in this case, we see that uh, the, these red uh, data points, the upper critic field goes up, but it does not show a very clear upturn. So uh, this is different in the case where we move the Fermi level further up and uh, the KF becomes smaller and then we see more pronouncedly the uh, upturn. So we believe this is because uh, when we uh, move the Fermi level upward, the KF becomes smaller and then the spins are further uh, locked out of plane. Because uh, when I mentioned that the spins are locked out of plane, uh, in this case, actually the uh, um, um, focusing on the gamma point. Once you move away from the gamma point, the spins, they can also have an in-plane uh, component. So uh, the um, in-plane component really depends on how large the KF is. So uh, we can understand uh, 
on this behavior on the left side. And also on the right side, we show that uh, uh, we fix the six thickness of Latera to a uh, very large number. So in this case, the KF is almost uh, uh, like, uh, in this case, the KF is uh, smaller. And uh, you see that uh, for five layers of tin, uh, we see a clear upturn. But for a bilayer, uh, when the thickness goes up, goes down, uh, the thickness of tin goes down, we, the upturn actually becomes not so clear. So it all, it's also smeared up. So we believe this is because in the bilayer case, uh, one layer of tin is just facing the substrate. Another layer of tin is facing um, uh, the um, basic vacuum or saturated by hydrogen. So it has a strong uh, Rajma effect. So this is why in this system, the upturn is not so clear. Uh, another thing is that the, one can see that the enhanced apocritic field uh, does not go up uh, when we reduce the thickness of uh, uh, tin. This is different from TMD material. So for TMD materials, uh, although the data points here is uh, a little bit low, but uh, in, in fact, this is just because uh, the magnetic field uh, uh, one can apply is not is limited. So one, if one extrapolates, uh, then the exceed, uh, the, the enhancement of the apocritic field can be as large as uh, above 10. But uh, this enhancement soon decays uh, once we have uh, like a tri-layer or four-layer. This is because uh, uh, for thicker layers, uh, globally, the system becomes um, um, inversion symmetric. And uh, you, only for each layer, you break the inversion symmetry, you can still have uh, the, or you can still enjoy the icing effect. But in our case, because we do not need to break the inversion symmetry in the first place, so that's why we do not have a very um, sharp uh, dependence on the thickness of um, uh, tin. So um, like, let me summarize that. Um, so in trilayer standing, we find uh, uh, the so-called type two icing superconductivity. It was also found in, uh, for example, four layers of um, palladium diterite. And in fact, in retrospect, uh, we believe um, the uh, ionic liquid gated tin disenilite may also be a, a type two icing superconductor. But uh, you can see that here, there are also some data points on um, these materials. Um, they do not fall into these two cat categories. So uh, we believe there are more to play or, or more to come. Um, just uh, you have strong spin orbit coupling effect and some um, uh, strange um, orientation or, or uh, configuration of the spins. Um, so before I end this um, uh, talk, I want to also um, uh, advertise that uh, our theoretical collaborators, they, uh, based on this understanding, they calculated that um, just particularly searched in the material pool and these systems uh, candidates where um, icing superconductivity in the uh, type two case may be found. So they based on the um, high degeneracy, uh, high symmetry point uh, of the crystals and then just calculate uh, with large spin orbit coupling effect on the, on the best splitting. So, um, it's not guaranteed that this system can be superconductor. Um, we may still need to use, for example, liquid gating or some other methods to uh, introduce superconductor, uh, superconductivity in these systems. So um, let me summarize that. Uh, uh, so I um, focused on failure standing, which is a system we are more familiar with. And we talk about uh, the back structure and also the experimentally observed uh, enhanced apocritic field and also with upturn. And we uh, attribute these to uh, also icing superconductivity, um, but without breaking the uh, inversion symmetry. So, uh, I mean, I, I would like to thank my collaborators, um, Mong Kanyao, my former student, and also Yun Yi Zhang. He grew all the, these nice uh, standing uh, samples, and also our theoretical collaborators, Yong Xu and Hai Wen Yu, and also uh, Joseph Fausen and Jürgen Smet for the uh, ultra low temperature uh, measurements. And also, uh, this whole project is called. Uh, supervised by uh, Professor Chikun Shui. So um, before I end, I want to also uh, do a light little advertisement um, that in recent, uh, um, what uh, um, our group is doing in the recent years. So we also uh, uh, is interested in the um, high temperature superconductivity. Uh, so um, recently we uh, did this experiment by twist uh, uh, Bisco flake, although around 45 degree, a large twist. Uh, on the top of another um, BISCO, and we study the Josephine coupling between them. And the idea is that uh, um, for D wave superconductor, the uh, Josephine coupling should drop down to zero, but we uh, do not see such a uh, drop. Uh, so the, uh, it seems more like isotropic dependence. 
So it's quite provocative now that uh, we claim it's the S wave uh, coupling or uh, the um, just one junction on behavior uh, the, uh, seems to be uh, like purely S wave. And another thing we are uh, recent or um, have been doing for quite some time is to introduce lithium ions by this substrate solid ion conductor. So the substrate itself has solid uh, has lithium ions, and we can inject lithium ions by uh, applying a packet, and then uh, induce superconductivity. For example, here in titanium diselenide. And the quite interesting in this test um, is that it has superconductivity, and when you apply a magnetic field, it goes to the normal state. But uh, in the transition regime, we see some uh, oscillations here. The um, these are the uh, stripes. We subtract the, the background, and in the same regime, we observe a quantum uh, metal state. So we believe there is a um, clear um, link between these two behaviors. We have the periodic structure uh, spontaneously formed because of this uh, uh, indicated by these oscillations, and then uh, because of this periodic structure, we has the uh, superconducting fluctuation that uh, gives rise to quantum metal phase. So uh, I want to close this and thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any um, questions or any comments, please uh, write me an email because uh, uh, I, I, if there's uh, some audience uh, in the future for watching this uh, video, uh, thank you. Yeah, so we have a very small audience. So uh, if uh, um, two of you have some questions or comments, uh, um, please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Dan. Um, I, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to um, congratulate both of you for these very nice studies and beautiful results. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate and uh, also uh, uh, read a lot of your papers and uh, that's very informative and a lot of new things. Yeah, I can say. Uh, hopefully, say we can really discover the, something of, in that direction. Right. Well, uh, the, uh, uh, a, a question came to me now. I mean, these type two phenomena, as you coined it, um, it shouldn't be stunning specific. Right. 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 I mean, uh, I would, I would speculate that we are about to discover lots of few layer materials with this kind of um, enhancement. Uh, do you share this uh, speculation? Uh, yes, um, I believe, uh, for example, here uh, in the uh, four layer palladium ditelluride, they also find uh, large enhanced, largely enhanced apocalyptic field. And also this system um, uh, is uh, central symmetric. And uh, uh, when we looked into literature, for example, this system, uh, it's also symmetric central symmetric and also the bands are around gamma point. I actually just have a very nice parabolic band and uh, gamma point. So um, this is why I speculate uh, um, maybe this system is also just a type two icing superconductor. In fact, uh, uh, when we're looking to, oh, sorry, maybe I missed, uh, I didn't put that point in this plot, but uh, in the uh, original paper, they actually included that uh, uh, tin diselenide also in their prediction, because now I think this is not uh, in uh, prediction anymore. It's uh, basically like <laughs> confirmed um, in the past. Right. But let's say even if you forget about band structure uh -huh. and just I'm just speculating for a moment about symmetry only, uh, since these are uh, Van der Waals type materials, you would expect that the intralayer energy scales, they will always be larger than interlayer communication. Yeah. So as long as this is true, uh, even though each layer or even the entire thing is centrosymmetric, these systems will function like locally non-centrosymmetric materials because okay. of this. Yeah very yeah, small interlayer hopping. Mm -hmm. So uh, even I would expect that that's a speculation, of course, but even it's even a band structure independent property, I would think. I see. That, I see that was point. just a comment. OK, OK, thank you. OK.
so um, yeah it's uh, thanks a lot it's ding it was it was great to hear you talk i always enjoy it very much thank you well, thank you thank you for joining that's all old stuff you know everything 